Hello everyone and welcome to the Peel to Cat S product video. First thing, what's, let's check what's in the box. This is what I'm showing you right now is the rugged transportation case. So once you open the box, the first thing you will notice is the wonderful Peel to Cat S scanner. Black design, yellow button, it looks pretty awesome. Also, you have this power supply that comes obviously with the different connectors depending on the countries you are located. We have the USB cable that connects the scanner to the computer. Next is a plastic case with a USB key inside. I'm going to freeze the image here. If you get a PL2S, the case has a USB key with the license, the configuration file, and also the PL3D software. If you're getting a peel to cad s you will also find in the case the dongle that unlocks all the tools of our reverse engineering module. And this little pouch is the turtles, the target saver turtles. Those are going to be used when you're scanning uh, different parts to get better angle uh, for uh, tracking. You've got two boxes of 500 uh, positioning targets, so they're a three millimeter positioning target. Underneath the foam, there's an area with a little welcoming card. You've got this bigger card that, that tells you how to connect the scanner. And then you've got your calibration certificate. At the bottom of the box, you've got this wooden case containing the calibration plate. So this is very useful. Uh, make sure you take good care of it because uh, this is used quite often to calibrate your scanner. All right, so now let's move to connecting your peel to cat s First thing, well, in this case, I started my computer already. I open up the software and then I just plug the USB into the connector of the computer, plug the power supply into the wall, and then you have a little area on the wire to be able to uh, plug the power supply into the main cable. By the way, don't forget to plug the dongle if you want to have access to the reverse engineering tools of peel to cad -S. Then you just connect the cable to the scanner, putting the white little arrow upward to make sure it lashes nicely. Um, I'm using here um, an accessory called a turntable, which is very useful because you can put some targets on it and it's very easy to put a part on top so you can start scanning quite quickly. So in that case, you can see the software recognizes the scanner. It says it's well connected. So I just click on start and then I can start scanning. Really, there's no warming time, warming up time, sorry. It's very simple to use. It's very straightforward. You just, you know, present the scanner directly to the part and you, as if you're painting, you just go over, over it. So now I'm gonna show you how to use uh, the small turtles that comes with it. So I'm going to change to another part. Let's say you're trying scanning with a you know, different angle and you just having the target on a turntable is not enough. You'd like to have some target at an angle so you can better capture. So you just open the bag, use the target, place them simply around the part in different location. There's not a specific pattern. You just want to have a few of them around. So when you're scanning, depending on the angle you're using, the scanner can see the target easily. So I'm going to show you because it's better to if you see it while I'm scanning. So really nothing more complex than that. Now moving to calibrating your peel to cat S. Um, as I showed you at the bottom of the box, there's a calibration uh, plate. So you uh, click on the software, you go to calibration, it pops up a special uh, visual and basically you start from about a foot away from the calibration plate and you just move up. So it's gonna take 10 measurements going from down to up. Then it's calculating and it's gonna give you a scanner is calibrated. It's really not more complex than that. It takes about 30 seconds max. So a little moment here when I'm wondering what's next and then I say, yeah, how about scanning? So once the scanner is calibrated, uh, it's very easy again, you just click on scan, you grab a part, grab your scanner, and you're good to go. 
what I want to show you here is uh, located at the side of the screen, there's a, a slider that shows you if you're too far or too close from the part. So what you want to keep is a very is a distance of about a foot from the part, which is in the uh, green zone on the screen. And then you just go around the part as if you're printing. As you can see, I'm not moving much faster than that. This is really a, like a standard speed to scan it. It's good. Uh, if you're going too fast, it might have some difficulty capturing. If you're going too slow, well, you're kind of wasting your time. So that's about the, uh, the, the speed I'm taking. Now, it might be easier for you to use a turntable and to put the part on it. So that's why I'm moving to that. As you can see, there's no problem of holding the part in your hand or placing it on the table. The scanner will be able to retrack himself and found out the location of the part. So now what I'm doing is I'm really just floating around the part, making sure that I'm capturing every single angle. So what I'm really looking on the screen, I'm not looking at the scanner. I'm really looking at the screen and try to see, am I missing a surface? Do I need to scan a little more? Do I need to turn the part around? And you're really trying to figure out, do I have all the little details, the dots, the holes, everything I need on my part to be able to finish the job? By the way, if you ever realize you're missing data after scanning, you can always go back and scan more, add more data. You can even change the resolution afterwards. That I mean that if you're trying to have a size of triangles that are about one millimeter and you realize you better have more resolution, you want it to have, uh, I'm showing right now the size of the triangles, and you say I want to have 0.3 millimeters, for example, at this moment after you're done scanning, you can still change the resolution you can see that right away after I'm done scanning, I get an STL file right away, which is a mesh of many, many triangles together. So I don't need any external process. That data here could be sent to a 3D printer that could be arranged, could be sent to a 3D CAD model if you want. Uh, now I'm switching parts, so you can see what it looks like when I'm scanning with the turtles around the part. Again, as you see earlier, it's not a really big um, setup to create. I'm just going to go there and erase the data I've scanned already and just scan, start the scan again. So the trick of scanning a part, if I may say, is you really want to check the details. You don't want to look for the whole part. You really want to go around the part and scan all the small details and the complex surfaces because the main area is going to be scanned anyway. So that's why I'm trying to, I'm trying to look at the dog, the paws, the little uh, the section at the bottom where he's sitting on and make sure I get the corners right and I move around and I'm really looking at all the details. This is the best way to scan, especially with the peel to cat S. That's a scanner created for small part with small details on it. So scanning a part like this is really about uh, making sure that you capture the whole geometry. As you can see, I'm really looking at my screen, focusing on am I missing data? Have I seen everything I needed to see? Is the corner at the bottom of the, the dog good enough? So at some point, I think that's enough data for me and I'm gonna be switching to another part. In that case, what I wanna show you with this third part is the part size range for the peel to cat S. Uh, we spec that the recommended um, part size is about up to half a meter. And this actually elephant, the statue is about half a meter wide. We're not saying that you cannot scan something bigger. We're just saying that with the scanning area of the peel to cad is being smaller than the peel to cad, if you're scanning a huge part, it's going to take you a lot of time. So that's why we say if you have parts that are, you know, a car side size, or you have a part that's two meter wide, you might be better using the peel to cat. If you ever have a huge part that has a lot of geometry, small details, you can use both scanners and combine the data of both of them as well. The other thing I wanted to show you as well is with the same peel to cat S scanners, we can either scan parts that are more mechanical parts, architectural parts, uh, sporting goods, anything you can imagine. So now that you've scanned many different parts for the many different project. You need to clean the data. You want to send it to a post-treatment software, a CAD software. So now I'm going to show you the way to do this.
So first of all, this is the demo part that I scan. I scan it with a high resolution, 0.3 millimeter, meaning that what you see right now on your screen, the STL mesh, all those triangles have a size of 0.3 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is I got a little noise. I was able to scan a little bit of the table. So now I'm gonna use my tool, going to select the actual part. I'm gonna invert my selection. That's a pretty clever idea. And then I'm just gonna click on delete. Now my next step will be to align the scan part with X, Y, Z. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to create a few feature on the part. Uh, what's very interesting in the Peel to CAD S module is that I have a very good selection tool. So in that case, I'm selecting those this area to best fit a plane. But you can see the software gives me a deviation how good this surface it is compared to the plane with the little uh, color map here. So depending on the color, if it's green, it's good. If it's a more like a red color, I'm missing material. So if I have a blue color, I have a little more materials. So this allows me really to see, in that case of a surface, you can see how not as flat as the other one it is. So those are tools for you to be able to see if you're doing something that's good or if your, your surface you're, you're using right now to create a plane is not so accurate. What I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to use the selection tool to select this hole in the center to create a circle. So what I want to do is I want to use those plane and I want to use this circle to align my scan data with X, Y, Z. Next step for me is using the uh, alignment tool. So what I'm doing right now is I'm aligning, telling the plane one is actually that I want it to be the X, Y plane. Plane two, I want this to be the Y, Z plane. And then I can say, well, in that case, the circle, I want the circle to be, I think what's left is the origin of Y. So this gives me an X, Y, Z alignment. Obviously, depending on the way you want to design and on your part, you can select different feature to have a different set of alignment that works uh, for you. Another interesting tool within the software is uh, the cross-section tool. So in that case, what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using a plane that I have already created. And I'm going to be creating a cross section on a specific area on the one on the part. Because what you want to do is you want to have a, um, a profile that you can send afterwards in your 3D CAD system to create a sketch. So I can manually decide at the precise location where I want to do my cross section. I click on create and then I have it. The other thing I can do now is create more and more feature. I have a few holes so I'm creating cylinder in those holes. I probably have a few planes. You can also create uh, slots. You can create spheres. You can create polylines. You can even measure a few angles, distances. There's many many different tools that are available to you depending on project and depending on the intention that you have within your design project. So we've shown you a lot of different ways of creating parametric surfaces, but if you have a surface that's hard to create like a plane, a cylinder, uh, something we should call a freeform surface, like this weird curved straight area that I have here, we have some different tools for that. So what I'm using here is a single patch surface. So using the geometry I selected, it's creating one major surface that's gonna be wrapped on it. So later this surface can be cut, assembled with other surfaces. Another interesting tool we have is something called Silhouette. So you're selecting your parts and it's gonna create like a, the contour line that goes all around the part. Let's say you wanna put that part into a, a box and you wanna create the, outs, the foam around it. This is another example of all the different tools that you have in the Appeal to CAD S software. Now I'm gonna talk about the hole filling tools. So we have one that's easy, you click on the hole and we fill it. We also have the partial filling like this, and we also have a tool to do the bridge, which is just an area in the center of a hole. So those are the different tools that you have available for you in order to, your, to do your process.
Um, we have also a defeature tool. So if you have an area that has a few bumps, you select it. The software creates like a hole and fill it up. So those are a few of the tools that you have available for you. Some of your project, you might not need to create the whole surface in, with uh, precise parameter, uh, cylinder planes, things like that. Sometimes you just want to have a basic surface on your surface, on your part, sorry. And that's possible as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm isolating an area of the part that I've scanned and I'm erasing the, the, the section that I don't need just to create that, that center section that's important for me. What I'm gonna be doing afterwards is I'm gonna be using uh, the single surface tool that's gonna select that area and just wrap a surface around it. So it's hard to describe exactly. It's the software is creating thousands, of, well, not thousands, maybe hundreds of different small little surfaces really to be able to capture the geometry. So obviously the cylinder or the plane section will not be shown as a cylinder or a plane. It's really showing many, many small little surface, but it's a quick way for you to transform that STL into an IGS or a step file and send it to your uh, 3D CAD model. So those are all the features I just created. Let's jump into the CAD software and see what we can do with that. So now I'm going to be opening uh, SolidWorks. This is the CAD software I decided to use for this video. Uh, so in SolidWorks, quite easy. You open up your mesh file, so your STL that you created with the field to CAD S. So that's going to be important in a few seconds. So this STL is going to be used as a reference when you're building or when you're getting your geometry distances, things like that. You still have the STL behind. Then what I'm doing, I'm going and in insert features, import it, and then I'm gonna go and select the entities that I created earlier in the field to CAD S program. So I bundle all of them into the same package of entities. I'm fast forwarding because the importation takes a little longer since I have a very complex surface uh, that I created earlier. So now you can see all the features, the plane, the circle, cylinders, the freeform surface, the silhouette, the cross section, everything is there. So I'm going to be using one of the plane to go and create a 2D sketch. What's very interesting is when I create my sketch, you're going to see that the software SolidWorks is allowed to snap, uh, snap directly onto uh, the cross section. So this allows me to use the cross section as a reference to be able to draw. Obviously, I can change a drawing uh, in that case, you're going to be seeing uh, the, um, the curve is about 10 millimeter, but if I want, I can use 12, I can use 11 if I want. It really depends on you because now you have the power to either create a perfect copy of the part or create a perfect part. So now I'm finished quickly this uh, 2D sketch. I'm going in 3D and I'm going to be able to use uh, to do an extrusion. So by doing this extrusion and having the STL behind, I can really see what the part feels like. Uh, I can realize, oh, maybe I should have exported that extra surface so I could have done an extrusion up to the surface. So this is all the tools that you have available to go into SolidWorks, to go in your CAD software and play with this. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you have a few questions, feel free to send us an email or call us. Have a good day.